Hello, welcome again to another pictorial over here. Not tutorial, but a pictorial of the simplest basic diagram again that I found from our textbook dealing with the basic symbols. And a few points to be made here. This is a battery, a car battery, obviously. This is the pictorial of it, not the symbol of it. Obviously, it's 12 volts, but it's not labeled 12 volts. We know it's 12 volts. It is the power source, the battery. Now, when you have one component to another component, obviously, you need wires as conductors. Where is the load? Wherever the current is going to, to, to give the work, they call it, this is the load. This could be a fuel pump. A starter motor, a power motor for the windows, a power motor for uh, switches for the doors, any motor it could be. But in this case, they put a light bulb. This light bulb is, let's say, one of your reverse lights or tail lights. In this, you see a little loops representing a coil or a filament with resistance the load will have resistance how much resistance depends what the load is so we have a positive a conductor wire going from one side of the terminal of the battery which is the positive going to one side of the filament of the bulb as you can see it looks actually like a bulb because this is a pictorial the other side of the bulb goes to and it's called the return conductor wire so it goes back to the battery now a few things to be made here a few points for those of you who are beginners i tried to find the most basic uh, diagram that i can before we go to the symbols this is a battery obviously now let me ask you those who have batteries obviously is this side terminals or are these top post terminals? And what do I mean by that? There are side terminals over here, as you know. And let's say GMs, they came out with these, uh, uh, with these terminals that are on the sides. The basic battery, car battery, is one that is a top post. They have it on the top. So is this top or is it side? Well, from this pictorial you can see these are the top posts so in other words only a battery with a top post am i to understand this correctly only there are batteries from this one that are top posts that can give current and give 12 volts no gm came out later on with all these side posts that have all the corrosion on it <clears throat> and when you try to put a booster cable it doesn't fit it doesn't make a connection so those are later on this is a typical car battery with the top post that theory you have to derive it's just showing you it is a power source a power source can be a power supply now this is obviously dc <clears throat> not ac and it goes to the filament if for whatever reason as you can see from here we need a complete path Whatever leaves the battery, whatever current leaves the battery, this is a voltage source, this is a pressure. Current is the uh, electron flowing to the light bulb, going in one side, going into the filament, which emits electrons, and it comes back to the battery. We have to have this formula. You have to leave the battery and come back to the battery. How you do it is up to your judgment. And what do I mean by that? This is one wire. I can take another wire. Let's say it's not long enough to reach this one. Let's say I need two or three wires together. <clears throat> uh, um, two or three wires connected together to get to this point. That's fine. As long as there's a connection from here to here. Doesn't matter if it's one wire. Doesn't matter if it's two. Doesn't matter if it's three. Same theory applies from here. Let's say this one return wire will not reach back to the battery. That's okay. Let me put two, let me put three together, let me put four together. 
That's the first one. As you can see, this wire is completely back to this one in this pictorial. Some time ago, <clears throat> I came up with this one. Now, this is the same <clears throat> pictorial. Okay? We're not, a we're not at schematic level right now because these are not the symbols for schematics. But the only thing that is a schematic uh, symbol is the ground. We took out the whole thing. And we said, you know what? This point is really the same as this point. So, in order to make to simplify things, we came out with the ground symbol. See all these little dashes? Those little dashes? Doesn't mean that this is an open circuit. See, that's the, the misconception. And I get from viewers, no. This point is still connected to this point. That you have a return path. This is not open. Never. You cannot have current flowing if this was if this was open. So that's a pictorial of it. Okay? Now we're gonna find other pictorials. In this pictorial, we go through, as you can see, again a battery. The battery goes through a fuse, but look at the fuse. The fuse opened on us for whatever reason. Why? <clears throat> Let's say there was a short to ground. Where is a short to ground in this in this video? In this pictorial, right here is before the fuse. Right here is after the fuse. The fuse open. If the fuse open, we have a short. Come over here. We say on a normal, normal situation, on the normal situation, this fuse would be closed. Current would flow where? These are two loads. These are, let's say, your parking lights. The current will come here to this splice, to this node, and split up. Some of it would go here, into the bulb, coming out of the bulb, going where? Back to the negative. Same thing over here. Current flows here, goes in here, comes out. Let's say this is the left uh, headlamp. Goes in the headla uh, left headlamp, comes out the he left headlamp. Let's say this is the right. Right headlamp goes in and comes out. The current comes back to this one. Because when the current goes here to this point, it has to go back to the ground. Why? Because that's the path of least amount of resistance. Zero ohms from here. It's not going to go back up here because there's resistance here. So it goes here, goes out in here. See the arrow? Goes in here, goes in here, and comes out here. Oops. Comes out. A problem is we have a short. We have a short from here to here. When we put a short over here, we completely bypassed this guy question is that from a viewer if i put it over here why did i bypass this one why don't i just bypass this one right in other words i have a short for whatever reason this wire broke let me put an x this wire broke in its mission or in its situation that it broke it touched a ground or the ground terminal of the battery not good Okay, so his question is, well, if I just bypass this one or this wire came out from here, so, okay, I understand why this one doesn't light. Why? Maybe this one should light. No, a short to ground is a dead short, zero ohms. We know that current, the electron flow, always looks for the path for the least amount of resistance. You cannot get better at lower resistance than from here to here. That's zero ohms. From here to here is still resistance. The current will come here and say, mm, I have two paths to go. This one or this one. Which one should I take? I like this one. No resistance. The same example that I gave today in a previous video. If you have traffic flowing, you come to two highways. This represents a lot of traffic. This represents, by this wire, this short, no traffic at all. Which highway or interstate, whatever, 
which interstate would you take? You would take this one, right? Why? No traffic, no resistance. So thinks and so is the current. He thinks like you. He wants this one. When he thinks this one, he says, you're out of the picture. I'm going to bypass you and I'm going to bypass you. Because this is the path of least amount of resist. Let's say I have three, four bulbs in a row, a parallel across it. What will happen to the other ones? Everything is bypassed. You can have four bulbs. You can have five bulbs, six bulbs, seven. Name the quantity. Nope. It wants the path of least amount of current. I hope that answers the, the viewer about his question. Let's go to a, a different scenario. <clears throat> this one over here, same, same scenario, <clears throat> right? We have a switch. We're missing what? A fuse. That's okay. What about this one? Same scenario. We're missing a fuse, but that's okay. <clears throat> that's okay. You see the symbol right here. When I always point out to you the symbol of the battery, the positive one, <clears throat> the positive ones is the positive, the longer one. The shorter one is... The ground terminal. Okay? This one represents how many cells. So there'll be one cell, there'll be two cells. One cell, two cells. Now, here's a motor. Could be a, a fuel pump. Could be a motor for power windows. Could be a motor for your door. Power doors. Could be for anything. Regardless of that. Here's, the, here's the, the ground I was discussing before. Are these connected together? Look, there's an open here. No, these are connected. This is the same point as this one. This symbol is the same point, is the same symbol as this one. We want to measure, not voltage in this one, we want to measure current. And what is, how does current perform in a circuit? Current performs by going through the wires, through the motor, and back. Therefore, we want to measure current. We want to measure with it with a a meter. <clears throat> We're going to put an ammeter. We're going to have to break the circuit. What do we mean by breaking? We're going to physically have to take apart this wire. This wire was like this. Oops. We broke it. So in the event that we broke it, to measure this, we take the positive one. To this one in series it's called it's positive of the current meter going to the positive of this one negative going to the other side which is the motor when you measure with the current meter you have to put yourself in the place of that wire or that symbol or that component that you are measuring because the current has to flow through the meter okay through the meter what would happen if I would reverse this? Instead of putting the positive, I'll put the negative. This would deflect the other direction. And you know you're putting it in reverse polarity. No problem. Now, that's fine and dandy. But let's say I have a, a clamp meter. As you've seen, I use it in videos. I don't put this in series. Where? What am I doing? When I put this clamp meter... I'm leaving this intact. I'm leaving this connection intact. And I'm putting this across a wire. And I'm putting this across any wire with the jaws. As we've seen so many videos that I did with on the channel Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto. Reason being you don't have to break it and just put it across is because if current flows through a wire, it creates a magnetic field of flux. Therefore, by that amount of that that meter, the clamp meter, can detect how much current is flowing. Much easier, much easier than breaking this connection. We come now to, obviously, a voltmeter. Voltmeter is much easier. Even if you were going to use this method and actually have to break it, the connection and put in series, this, no. This, I'm, I'm putting across. It's like a light bulb. I want a light bulb, I'll put it across. I put it across... I want to measure this resistor. This resistor could be a light bulb. What do I do? I put it right across it. I don't have to break this wire. 
I don't have to disconnect the, the switch. I don't have to do anything. Easy connection. When I put it across, it measures the potential difference between here and here. That's the difference between this meter and this meter. Now, the meter that I used that I showed you one time, I went over the features of this, but for automotive purposes, that's what I tried to stress. I didn't go over the whole thing. There are some features that are on, are on this. You don't have to use all these features when, you, when you're dealing with automotive. You're not dealing with AC voltage, so you don't have to use that. Ohms and something called the diode function. In the olden days when we had alternators, we have diodes. We still have diodes because you have to change AC to DC. But you're, gonna, you're not going to take apart an alternator and measure DC. You still have uh, the diodes inside of it. You still have diodes in circuits, like I showed you. But more or less, more or less, you'll be dealing with volts DC. So therefore, you're not going to be worried about the duty cycle. All these things that are here, you're not going to measure capacitance, which this symbol is. You are going to have measure something called that beeping to measure continuity. But basically, you're not going to measure AC amps because you don't have AC volts. If you have AC volts, you have AC amps. You don't have that. You are going to measure these two, volts DC and amps DC, current DC. The highest range is 200 amps. If you want more than 200 amps, this meter will not suffice. When will I use that? Let's say I want to measure that connector, that wire, that heavy wire that goes from the battery to the starter. You might be pulling 300, 400 amps. This is not enough. You need a different meter. But for these purposes, it will suffice. That's why in that video, when the person left a comment about that, I felt it wasn't necessary to go through every single feature that automotive technicians do not use. I just stressed, we just use DC and DC current. Okay. Now the name of this, this is over 20 years old. I really tried to find the name of it and there is no name to it. Unfortunately, I don't know why they don't put on their product, but it doesn't matter that this one, it does not matter that this one is is old whatever they still make good quality um clamps ac dc clamps they still make good quality as you can see so therefore you know what just look online you can find these clamps but remember if it'll have all these features the and the the um the clamp meter sometimes might not be ac dc might be only dc which is okay and the rating might be 200 amps or 100 amps it might not be more than that Okay, so keep that in mind. And like I said, I hope if you like the video, please give a like. And I hope this was informative. My channel, Joe Electronics Schematic for Auto. My other one, which has some different ones, Automotive Electronics Schematics by Joseph. And trying to get monetized from that one. And after I monetize these two channels, I'm going to go something differently, altogether differently besides electronics, uh, different channels. So please try to subscribe and recommend to your friends. I hope this was helpful. Thanks.